So Syracuse averaging a little over 245 yards total offense a game. On the rush, about 126, and on the pass, 118. We'll set it up against that Boston defensive front. It's actually a 3-4, but they'll move the outside backers up. And Caden carrying the linebacker, Peter, Peter Holy, with him. By Peter and there he is from Philadelphia. Early in the season, Gaden had a lot of problems with fumbling, and that was one of the major concerns of Dick McPherson. In fact, he sat him down for a while. Gaden has seemingly hung on to the football pretty well since then. He had 94 yards against Navy and a couple of touchdowns. Evidently, he learned his lesson well. Mike Ciano to the far side. Scott Schwedes, the son of Gerhard, to the near side. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Up the middle they go, trying to soften it up. They've got Covington trying his luck against big Mike Ruth, that nose guard. Dave Pereira, the strong safety, had to come up and fill in nicely and did the job. No word as to the availability of Bill Romanowski. He was hurt. He is in there right now, so evidently he came back, the freshman, who's done a nice job. Mike commits the quarterback. Second down and five. Schwedes. Is out to the far side. Jim Tate, the tight end, flip flops, and they send Ciano in motion. That's Jamie Covington. And on the bottom of the pile is Mike Ruth, that nose guard. There he is, 68 Holy coming in over the top. And the conehead has even made, <laughs> made an appearance. Kurt Gowdy for president. I think the guy's about uh, two weeks late for the election, isn't he? <laughs> well, there's a lot of color of college football here and again uh, a beautiful setting for college football on a fall day but as we said also a beautiful setting for this historic event irrespective of who wins the ball game it's been an incredible four years for a group of seniors for the Boston College Eagles that were not heavily recruited now they march it off on this last flag that was dropped we'll see a procedure call probably as the referee comes over here Tom Thammer illegal motion offense repeat second down Second down, 11. No, we had told you before that Syracuse had been outscored big in the first quarter all year. Well, their big quarter's the fourth. What will they do today? Second and 11 from the 31. Play action fake. Pretty good rush. Caden avoids one tackle. And fights over the 35-yard line. Todd Russell, the left corner, came up finally when it looked like they had a big loss way back inside the 25. They maybe get four or five yards on this one. Actually, it's a pretty good fake here by Kometz as he does the fake screen to the far side. Here comes Dave Pereira, number 41 for Boston College. He's going to go to the sidelines and get some sticky on his hands because he lets Gaden go, and Gaden not only gets back uh, to the line of scrimmage, gets up to where they've got about a third and three, third and four. Actually, he gets about six and a half. They're going to call it seven. Ball is on the 38-yard line. Had it and lost it. Scott Schwedes, sophomore from DeWitt, New York. His dad, Gerhard, played on the national champions at Syracuse in 59. And now for a fourth down situation, they're going to bring in the kicker, Jim Fox. And that wind is starting to pick up a little more. It'll be blowing kind of cross into his face. Kelvin Martin will be standing back at the 28-yard line for BC. In the great films, that's what's called a drop. Schwedes, the number one receiver for Syracuse, has had very secure hands all season long. Very disappointing, I'm sure, for him. 12-48 in the third quarter. There's your left-footed kicker. Big kick into the wind. And Martin is thrown down by Jimmy Gorzalski. Well, they said that he's been a strong one all around, but you can't say enough about the job that those fellas have done. We have a timeout at Syracuse 10, Boston College 7. He had three for the year coming in, incidentally, on that last kick. You saw number four, Jim Fox, coming off. That kick was 57 yards to put Boston College in this tough field position. And that kick is the longest of Peach's career. We're very, very short of a first down, just inches short. 
And here's the drive that we talked about before. Look at the sequence, how easily BC earlier with 22 plays, their first two possessions don't get close to that in their final four. And in particular, you forget the, the last one, the halftime, but three downs, four downs, and four downs. When BC stops themselves, it's uh, many times been on the turnover. They have twins set up to the near side. I formation, third and one on the 15-yard line. Got the first. That's a tough first down as the big man, Strahan, or was it Stratford? Let's see when they get off, and it's Stratford who comes up off the bottom. And he had to work for that one with Gregory Green, Hill, Rudy Reed. They were all there. As he gets it out to the 16-yard line, he needed a yard, and he got his yard, and it's a first down and 10. Boston College with 10 first downs in the game. Martin and Phelan near side to receive. One running back. He gets it. Stratford. And very close to the 15-yard line. Rick Miller and David Lee coming up from the secondary to pull Stratford down. Stratford averaging four and a half yards a carry and 60,890. That's actually a little over attendance. There's standing room only of about, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 people. We'll let them in. The fire marshal will never know. 10-7 is our score. Syracuse with 10-37 to play in the third. Phelan and Flutie are the wideouts to the far side. They started a little early. And a flag finally thrown. Well, there was a miscount that time, Kyle, because I believe the two twins on the far side started a little early. Let's wait to see what the call is. That's Rudy Reed, the linebacker, number 35. Yeah, what, when you're that wide, you're not going to be able to hear the quarterback, particularly with a crowd of over 60,000. So what you're watching is you're trying to watch. That's not where the movement was. The movement was on the outside with the receivers. And uh, Tim Green is finding uh, a lot of green stuff on his helmet and on his back as he's seen a lot of that green turf. He is one of those 12 Lombardi candidates, as Eddie mentioned to you. And that's a pretty heavy honor for a team with uh, the record that Syracuse has. They called him on the motion that time with the penalty yardage now for Boston College, 35 yards. Here, they've got Phelan and Flutie on the far side. Tight end again on a second and 17. Rudy Reed, the linebacker tackling. Peter Casparello is the receiver, his sixth. BC fan, you're probably wondering where Scott Gieselman, their tight end All-American candidate is. He has started and has done seven, six of them right there. You can tell they're in difficult for Flutie. They got three people back deep. Able to double up. All right, third one. Double pumps. And thrown behind Stratford that time. Stratford, a pretty good pass receiver. He has uh, over 328 yards on pass receiving and four touchdowns in addition to everything else he's done on the ground. So he rarely drops him. That was not a well-thrown ball. So that brings into a fourth and one situation, and Scott Schwedes will go back to receive. And Steve Peach, our reserve quarterback, number six right there, will be in to kick. One kick, 13 yards, and it hurt. As Syracuse took advantage. Sweeties had to give ground and finally dropped at the 30-yard line. A 45-yard kick. And Jack Picknell, a snapper and center on the BC team, the made the tackle. So Syracuse takes over, and they lead it 10-7 with 9.36 to play in the third quarter. If you're wondering what it's like here, it's warmed up a little. It's 40 degrees. Yeah, but that's in the sun. We're in the shade, and uh, my uh, wind chill indicator says it's... 20, at least your nose says that, Eddie. You got <laughs> it's lit up, huh? Yeah. First and 10 from the 30, Harold Gage. Only there to receive him. Little Eddie, the red-nosed announcer routine. <laughs> Feel like it. It's the feet. It's the feet we worry about. 
The nose has been through a lot, but these feet. 10-7 here, Syracuse over BC, Purdue, Indiana in the Big Ten, 14-14 in the second quarter. A lot of interest there for the old Oaken Bucket. Gabe and Covington are the running backs in the eye. Second and four on the 36. And the 40-yard line is Harold Gaydon. Tony Thurman, the free safety. That's an interesting story, too. Thurman was an all-state quarterback as a senior in high school when Doug Flutie was a senior, and he's here now, and Flutie's the number one quarterback, and Thurman is the big free safety. Harvard, Yale. Yale 20, Harvard 14, and it's being played not too far away. It's in the second quarter. Pereira out. Perel is in. They go to an extra man up front with Covington, Gaten, and Grimes in a full house on a third and one. And commits. We'll see if he can engineer that first down, and they're going to get it. That's the seventh first down for Syracuse. Commits two for two. Watch Mike Ruth on the snap of the ball just trying to get penetration. Thrust ahead. It's like someone going off the starting blocks on a swim meet. Boy, that's a tough man to test. He's going against the, the hub of that defense. Time Kometz almost telegraphed the fact that he was going to carry. He kind of started up with his head a little bit before. We have a first and ten on the 41. Jamie Covington. Scott Harrington was the tackler on the play. Dick McPherson about ready to pull a pass out of his hat, I think. He's been very coy the way he's mixed his offense. Nothing that Syracuse does really surprises me, Kyle. We saw what they did against Nebraska. You saw how they held Maryland in check. Maryland only scoring seven points, Nebraska nine, and look what they're doing to BC today. They have them down 10-7 in the third. And Covington on a second down and six is wrapped up by Roy Norton, a backup down lineman. See a piece of material that has yellow on it. Tablecloth? No, I think it's a flag. Number 84 coming away right there. Big strong guy, Roy Norton, fellow we talked about. BYU. Huh. And there's another one of those games that you can throw out the team's statistics coming in. Yep. That's uh, for everything over there in the state of Utah. BYU uh, against their cross-state rival. And while BYU is up there in the ratings, they have got themselves gnashing and gnawing today at 7-7 all. What's this about? Holding, offense, repeat, second down. And six yards. Tate the tight end, messengering in, and commits the quarterback receiving line. Remember now, Syracuse has outscored their opponents big in the fourth quarter, 47-25. And we have 7-12 left to play in the third. Syracuse 10, Boston College 7. He hasn't passed many times, will he now? He lays it out there, and it's complete. Same situation before. A critical fourth down call in the first half. And Kometz gets... The first time to Siano, this time to Suarez. And Neil Light is the man who pays the price the second time. Not a very pretty pass, but the ball is thrown up. The defensive back with his style of coverage, not even looking at the ball. A rip into the wind, and the wind actually held the ball up. So a first and 10. And now Gaden will try and knife his way for a yard or two, and he gets nothing, and Mike Ruth again to tackle. And that is the second time, Kyle, as you mentioned, where they've come up with a big pass when they've had to have it. They've had to have it. And this time against one-on-one -on -one coverage. And if you're a receiver, that's something you love to see. Well, that's when, as a coach, you, you get, get an ulcer. It's when you would want to use that NFL uh, suggestion now of putting and helmets where on the sideline you could say, look up, look up, here comes the ball, you can intercept it. But uh, you're not getting any verbal help out there today. Second and seven. Or second and ten, I should say, and an incomplete pass. Mike Ciano, the intended receiver. 
Komet's coming up. Strategically placed passes in this game. As you see, five for eight. They don't go very often to the air, but when they have, the two biggest passes of the game have come at times when they need them the most. He's averaging over 20 yards of completion, so they're not they're not just throwing the short ones either. They are third down situation bound. Third and ten. They are three four ten. Thirty percent on third down. Somebody jumped off, and now we'll have a whistle. Well, they had time left to get the play underway, but they thought better of it. It's got to be a legal procedure against Syracuse because the ball was never snapped. Yeah. Was. So another penalty. This will be the 40th yard penalty of the day. You got BC stunning trying to show this young quarterback that uh, they're going to be coming his way. The tackle moves a little bit. Vince Munn comes in, Neil Eitan. Home start, offense, repeat, third down. So they repeat the third down on the dead ball, and Neil Eitan is in, Munn has also checked in. We have a 10 to seven ball game with 5.59 to play here in the third quarter. Covington and Gaten again. Intercepted, Bill Romanowski. goes back and the linebackers drop back in coverage number 53 Romanowski is there steps over after he bumped the tight end and picks it up so for Romanowski the freshman pretty big interception his, We're, his first of his career Syracuse 10 Boston College 7 when night comes out to play Turn it loose with the silver bullet Find it, catch it, grab it, pull it It's the right light one When you hit the town Coors Light will never, never, never slow you down Feel it light Turn it loose with the silver bullet tonight Coors Light Beer Watch closely. You're about to learn how to prepare a very practical Ford Escort Turbo GT to accelerate like a very fast performance car. The new Ford Escort Turbo GT. Further modifications are not required. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? <laughs> Sellout crowd at Sullivan Stadium watching as Syracuse leads 10-7. 5.53 to play in the third. Flutie to pass. Big pressure by Kimmel. Incomplete. Strahan, the intended receiver. Incidentally, the turnover that gives the ball back to Boston College, the first in four games by Syracuse. We told you at the outset of our telecast, they don't make many mistakes. They don't score a lot of points, they don't give up many points, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. And for that reason, their coaching staff has to be commended. Martin near side, Phelan far side. Second down, Chandler. Line. Flutie and BC ready to fly. Let's see what happens. the cutback. He does it as well as anyone you'll see in college. Put give you a leg and take it away and he goes to the outside and gets the first down. That's exactly it. It almost looks like a lame leg. He keeps his heels very close to the ground. Able to move and break quickly as Green tries to catch on to him. There's the movement and here's a good block by Gerald Phelan. Number 20, the wide receiver for Boston College. To Alloy Stratford to uh, get on down past the first down marker. First and 10, Stratford with 80 yards now today. Martin nears. And Stratford again. And this time the pursuit is there. Cut off is one of the people overlooking, is coming up off the bottom of the pile is Rudy Reed, the linebacker. There's Jeff Kanoff. 
I tell you what, uh, you see a lot of good runners in college football, but I don't know. Have two sets or a set of spaghetti legs like Troy Stratford. <laughs> Boy, he can really move him and shake him. Got that lateral movement. Failing near. Martin, far side stretch. Second down, nine at the 47-yard line from the I formation. Flutie underthrowing. Is it complete? It's an incompleted pass. Time for Kelvin Martin on the far side. Anything to keep warm here. Flutie now, 9 for 20, 133, uh, 123 yards. Well, he was 5 for 5 at one point. At another point, he was 0 for 5. And this is his severest test well, this he, year. He had to throw into double coverage that time to try to get the ball to Martin. Sean Dombrowski is back in the game. Flutie rolling left, third and nine. Catch by Steve Strahan. I would say so. And again, he goes to the last option on the play. John Roos was there at the tackle, but they still complete the pass. Here's the coverage. The wide outs trying to go deep. You got a tight end coming to the near side. Three receivers on one side. There's the broken pattern. And now looking for number 33, Steve Strahan. He's there almost going down. Makes the catch. Well, he's parallel to the ground. Darren Flutie and Sean Dombrowski are set near side. Stratford again! Oh, is he an exciting runner? Not too many guys can start off on an off-tackle play. Break to the outside as quickly. Let's take a look. Here it comes. There's the block inside. Off-tackle. You got two people in the hole. You got both linebackers, Reed and Pigeon. They can't stay with him. Lateral movement back to the outside. He runs what looks almost like a question mark from the backfield. You don't, you don't diagram, that, diagram that as a coach. First down and 10. Ball on the 26-yard line. Under four to play in the third quarter. And trailing at 10-7. Flutie ready to go. Good blocking out in front. Strahan carries the ball down to the 15-yard line. David Lee and Vic Bellamy. The left part of the secondary for Syracuse now. Syracuse is going to have to start thinking a little bit more run instead of pass. They've been king on the pass. There's and now BC going more to the run as Jack Bicknell sends it in from the far side. And uh, almost got the Paul Revere type, one if by land, two if by sea. They've gone an awful lot with signal number one on the land. Tim Green, Rudy Reed, trying to plug up the holes now as Troy Stratford, a little slow coming up. They missed Stratford. He was injured in the Rutgers game, and we had that on USA. They missed him the following week. He came back and then re-injured his hamstring or pulled it in practice, but he's running well today. 98 yards for this man a year ago against Syracuse. He had 147 yards. Second down and eight on the 13-yard line. Dombrowski is to the near side. Derek Flutie to the far side. Ken Bell. As he changed up once he got inside and he cracks down inside. Tackles him around the five yard line. Well, BC has so few rushing touchdowns that once they get in about inside the 20, they know Flutie's going to try to run. So they put their linebackers way back. Excuse me, they know Flutie's going to try to pass. They put their linebackers back deep. They put their secondary back deep. And it's really forcing Boston College to keep running. And They're they'll bring the sticks out here, Kyle. But how big that turnover now, the pass interception, the first turnover that Syracuse has made in four games has turned into something very big right now as Boston College has just picked up the first down by inches. So they're down first and goal at the five-yard line and trailing by three with 2.43 to play in the third quarter. Number 24, Ken Bell, on his first rushing first down. He's done his work well. And now the Rhodes Scholar candidate, Doug Flutie, takes his team out with Jack Picknell, the coach's son, over the ball. Pitch back. Touchdown! And Stratford has pulled up a little lame. 
I believe he has done the job to the hamstring again, but he gets the touchdown. What a great blocking scheme for BC because Stratford's hamstring was pulled on about the four yard line. You'll see him, he's almost gonna have to jog in to the backfield. Right there, he starts to pull up. He's already limping at the three yard line. And fortunately, the blocking of BC, they didn't need it. Let's watch how well BC seals from the inside. First, it's the tight end, number 85, Peter Casparello. And then it's the guards pulling. That time, Steve Trapillo coming to the outside. So the interception in the first half by Flutie set up the touchdown for Syracuse. The interception this time sets up the touchdown for BC. They always talk about the importance of trying to avoid turnovers. Well, the turnover has certainly come back to haunt here as BC has gone ahead now, 13-10, and who is 33 of 36 on PATs will try to add one more. With 2.25 to play in the third quarter, Boston College has gone ahead. It's the BC Eagles 14, the Orangemen of Syracuse 10 to Foxborough in just a moment. There's a new movement sweeping the country, the 1985 Toyota van. It's so innovative, it'll change the way you think about vans. It seats seven or carries 1,500 pounds of sheet music and gives you the any van you can buy. You can even get an ice maker and two sunroofs. The Toyota van, it's a whole new movement. Do you know which of these oils engine protection under the toughest driving conditions, sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one, Mobile One. Now, Mobile One and our other fine motor oils come in this easy pour resealable plastic container. Mobile Motor Oil. Now it's easier to use than ever. Yes. So for BC, the touchdown, we've got Stratford on the pitch from Flutie to give Boston College the 14-10 lead. And Stratford with the hamstring pull. We'll find out on the next piece. He's going to be back on the field. There he is on the sideline, being tended to, walking around. Covington and Gaten will be back to receive for Syracuse. And on the short kick, out to the 28-yard line. As Syracuse trying to get some movement, some running room there. Dave Kaminsky, a defensive back and a reserve who is in on the kick teams, pull it in and got a couple of yards on the return. And now Syracuse will take over with 219 to play in the third and trailing at 14 to 10. 328 on that time of possession, incidentally, 72 yards. 10 plays, and Stratford on the five-yard run. Quarterback. And on the give to Harold Gaten. David Thomas, who has injured himself with a bad hamstring, coming in here, still hanging on. Thomas is six feet, 225 pounds. Ohio State, Michigan, and a good one. Florida, 19, Kentucky, 10 in the fourth quarter. Out of 14, Virginia, three at halftime. Yale Harvard in the game, 20 to 14 at halftime. Siano far, Schwede's near. Second and eight on the 31, commits. And that pass is complete, Todd Russell. Running Mike Siano out of bounds. Siano now with up around 350 yards receiving for the season. That was a very nice pass on the full run, looks up. Throws the ball just before the cut is made by Siano and gets it right in his hands. Didn't even have to break stride. They've got a good, good young quarterback in Mike Kometz. 14-10 is our score. 10. Covington and Gate. Back to carry and they give it to Gate. Smacked down pretty good by Mike Ruth and Dave Thomas. 
And on the bottom is David Thomas. Behind some up front blocking that time. He's up there along with Stevens, Simcoe, Volante, and Marone for Syracuse. Next, go Texas. Down there with some of that sagebrush, Kyle. We got uh, Texas a real big game today against TCU. And they'll be going against Baylor next week on USA. A minute to play in the third eye formation. And BC is fired and ready to go now. Mike Ruth, an All-American candidate. They're on the tackle. I think you may have hit on something earlier, Eddie. Uh, you talked about what Vic Nell had said about his defense. Really uh, some pretty unkind things in line with their game last week. There's the Penn Cornell game. And uh, he knew that he needed a, a max effort out of this Eagle defense because of what uh, Syracuse defense was going to do against his offense. West Virginia, team that is really in the running. Holy Cross in Maine tied after three. Dartmouth trailing Princeton at halftime. Chuck Gorecki was the injured player for BC. Brown over Columbia, 21-7 at halftime. For those of you out across the nation that are interested in what's going on in the Ivy League, a pretty good idea right there. 14 to 10. Boston College has just taken the lead. And with less than a minute to play in the third, we have a third down and nine. Syracuse is three for 11 on third down conversions. Did he hang on? They say no. McPherson very upset, but it was being juggled. It's a good catch by Siano, and the ball was really rifled in there. But uh, had he been able to catch the ball initially, it would have been complete. He juggled it and did not have complete control until he was past the sidelines. So it'll be a fourth and nine. Fox is in to kick, and he will kick up into that wind. Over the year, under 42 yards a kick. Boy, there's another good one. He had a 57-yarder first time. Kelvin Martin. Yeah. And down at the 17 or 18-yard line. That's a 41-yard kick there, and he's done a good job with the foot here today. So now Boston College will take over again. Syracuse hanging right in there with that great defense of theirs. Remember, they're number three in passing defense. They give it up at just over 117 a, yard, a game, 117 yards a game. Number five in total defense, 256.1 yards per. And their scoring defense is number eight, 12.7 points per game. From the 17-yard line. That is Ken Bell. Troy Stratford is not in there. Bell would be the likely replacement. Bruce comes over to make the tackle. Tim Green, number 72, coming up off the pile. Green has 14 sacks this year. He had 14 and a half last year. And so that's the end of the third quarter. We played three, and we have a doozy. It's Boston College 14 and in Foxborough at Sullivan Stadium.